Welcome to Politics Done Right on KCFP. I am your host, Egberto Williams. This is the progressive program that will take the mystery out of politics. This is the program that will encourage you to make sure government becomes we the people. Whether you are liberal, conservative, or otherwise, you get to air your point of view. Give me a call at 713-526-526. 5738. That is 713-526-KPFT. Remember, you can also send me a tweet to E-G-B-E-R-T-O-W-I-L-L-I-E-S. That is at Egberto Willie. Let us engage. It is politics done right. One, two, three, four. Well, folks, welcome to one more edition of Politics Done Right. I'm Egberto Willis, your host, along with our co-host, Roxy. Hello. Roxy, how are you doing I'm, today? I'm doing okay. I'm doing better than I'm doing yesterday, so that's all I can be thankful well, for. Well, you know what I heard? You know, I was getting a little bit worried because <laughs> I saw the time come in, and then Patrick said, you know, she may be under the weather, Egberto. And I'm like, oh, my God. I wouldn't leave you hanging out to dry. But you have never have. In fact, you've saved me so many <laughs> times before. But, folks, do remember, please, this is KPFT. The number, it's a call-in show. The number is 713-526-5738, 713-526-KPFT. And Roxy says it this way. 713-JAM-KPFT. Absolutely. And, by the way, folks, the first thing I want to do today, I want to start by thanking you guys very kindly. For yes. making, uh, for giving us a successful, a very successful fun drive. And politics done right, I love you guys. We actually made, we made it. Roxy, you know, yeah, we, we, we actually blew through it. Yes, we did. And that's always, that's always a good thing, you know, so, and having people, you know, call in. I know a lot, some people called in wanting to be on the show. Yes. We were talking to some, some cool people. Right. Um, but thank you so much for, you know, whatever you gave. It went, it went a long way, and it's going to continue to go a long way. Absolutely, and I tell you what, you'll be hearing from me as soon as I get the reports in. You'll be hearing directly from me because, like I said, folks, I appreciate every single one of my listeners. Remember, folks, this we do not restrict ourselves just to liberals. We want everybody to call here liberals, conservatives, Democrats, Republicans, Everybody, we want to talk to you. Whether I agree with you or not, hey, that's a different thing. But whatever the case is, you're going to be respected here. Si hablas español, por favor, llámame también. Call me whatever language you speak because we want to speak to you guys. But anyhow, Roxy, when did Davis was written off much too early? Do you know that? Our next governor-to-be, Wendy Davis, was written off. For too long, local Democrats have been whispering concerns about Wendy Davis's real chances of winning the Texas governorship. Republicans and national leaders of both parties all but discounted her. After all, Greg Abbott was over 50% in the polls. Funny thing has happened. Greg Abbott has fallen under 50%. Most importantly, all the groundwork that Wendy Davis with Battleground Texas and other local groups have been doing. It's probably not yet reflected in the polls because nobody is following these new voters. Things are changing. So, Roxy, let's get busy. It's time for the weekly blog post. You know, folks, uh, this was the piece that I placed up on the Daily Coast this week, and it got very, very good reviews. I don't know. I have my daughter in the studio with me today, and I'm hoping that she read my piece, but I have a feeling she didn't read this piece. And Roxy is given some eyes that she didn't either, but it's okay. I'm going to read it for you all today. The weekly blog post, it goes as follows. Ashley, did you read it? All right, okay. <laughs> She's not telling the truth. But anyhow, Wendy Davis is getting on her game at the right time. This week, 
A friend sent me a blog post written by Paul Burke, Senior Executive Editor of Texas Monthly. The piece titled, What Governor's Race Just May Be the Kick the Democrats in the Great State of Texas Needed to Get on Their Game After the Following Assertion. This is what he said, folks. With three months to go until the general election, there isn't much reason to talk about the governor's race. It's over. In fact, there was no governor's race. The only good day Wendy Davis had was the contratemps with Abbott over his with Abbott over his keeping the location of dangerous chemical secret, an exchange that Davis clearly won. Over, otherwise, she has little to show for her efforts. It's not entirely her fault. The larger problem is that the Democratic brand in the state is so damaged. The party lacks the infrastructure to win an election. The idea of turning Texas blue this year is a pipe dream. Greg Abbott is no ball of fire, but Republicans have figured out a simple formula to race. Just mention Barack Obama's name and every opportunity. It's the only strategy they need. Now, Paul Burke, cynical view of Texas politics, neglect two specific points. The campaign has not gone in earnest. The real clear politics polling shows the race between Texas Attorney General Greg Abbott and Texas State Senator Wendy Davis at 50.5% for uh, Abbott, 36.8% for Davis, a 13.7 point advantage for Greg Abbott. Unlike Republicans in 2012, one should not assume these polls are skewed. They are likely correct for the makeup of the sample poll. But after I wrote this blog, something interesting happened over the weekend. The conservative Rasmussen likely poll released this weekend showed shows the race at 48-40, an eight-point advantage for Abbott. This is great news for Wendy Davis's campaign. While the rest of the country sees Texas as a solid red state, the reality is that Texas is a non-voting state. This is not just conjecture, folks. The report from the Annette Strauss Institute for Civic Life at the University of Texas at Austin is probative. The report points out that Texas ranks 51st in voter turnout, 42nd in voter registration, 43rd in donations, 42nd in volunteering, and 37th in group membership. It also shows that Latinos and other immigrants are least likely to participate in civic engagement. The non-voting culture is not an accident. It is well designed. A biased media curtail information on air and in print. While the coverage given to Republican events are generally extensive, those given to Democrats rarely get consummate exposure. Local community newspapers that are very prevalent throughout the suburbs in Texas fail to run liberal, progressive, or Democratic points of view in the similar numbers to Republicans. They allow the spewing of verifiable propaganda and fallacies from Republican politicians and their operatives. In fact, our local paper, which ran our articles every two weeks after constant prodding for inclusiveness, changed their policy. They stopped printing all political op-eds from community members. They, of course, continued printing the propaganda from the politicians elected to the region. Propaganda, that's what they put out there. The media, and, and by the way, folks, after, I'm coming to the phones right after this. The media and a corrupt Republican Party cannot stop a good ground game. The effects of an effective ground game cannot be seen in current sample of polls. Many polls determine likely voters based on whether people have voted before. Of course, a poll looking at registered voters is only good for the current registered voter base. What is happening in Texas is an unprecedented registration campaign. Battleground Texas is a statewide organization that is registering and mentoring voters, many who have never voted before. Local Democratic clubs are independently launching voter drives throughout their districts. Most importantly, they are establishing relationships with potential voters to attempt to increase the likelihood they will turn out at the polls. Wendy Davis, Lieutenant Governor candidate Leticia Van de Poot, State Controller Mike Collier, and many other statewide officers have been crisscrossing the state's large population and non-voting centers throughout this huge state. Texans are hurting. Republicans have had near absolute power in the state for decades and can blame no other party for the hurt millions of Texans are feeling. Republicans in Texas have hurt Texans economically, educationally, and health-wise. 
Texas Governor Rick Perry and the current Texas Republican Party have sentenced thousands of Texans to death by refusing the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. I want to repeat that. They have sentenced thousands of Texans to death by refusing the Medicaid expansion to afford the Affordable Care Act. Republicans in Texas have in interfered with the reproductive, of reproductive services to health of women by affecting laws that closed many clinics. Texas Republicans have cut billions from our children's education while providing $19 billion yearly in tax breaks and credits to businesses. Texas Republicans continue to endanger the lives of Texans with lax regulation that caused the, the continued death of many in cancer alleys, and we have cancer, cancer alleys in this vicinity as well, and catastrophic fatal explosions as occurred in, a, in the for, uh, fertilizer plant in West Texas. The airwaves wharves have not yet started. Texas Republicans only have social issues to run on, even those or running away from them. If Democrats frame their message in a manner that touches every Texan, they will win. Democrats must all read Drew Weston's The Political Brain, the role of emotion in deciding the fate of the nation. Democrats must tailor the solutions to Republican inflicting damage specifically to their lives of every Texan. Make each one of those ads, those rallies, and those events speak to the lives and well-being of every individual in that audience. Who can forget the summer of 2013 as, Texas, as Texans marched in thousands in Austin? Who can forget as Texans out rallied Republicans at the Texas Capitol? Texans are waiting for real leadership. During the Wendy Davis rallies throughout the summer of 2013, the electricity was evident among women, among the young, and among the old throughout. Folks, we were there, man. It is time to awaken the state and shock Paul Burka and the Republican establishment because that's the only way you get progress in the state. You need two parties working for the people, not one party with full control. Many Americans first came to the realization of the oppressive policies being instituted in the state of Texas with the heroic filibuster affected by Texas State Senator Wendy Davis last Tuesday. The filibuster was just a continuation of an incessant fight by valiant Texas women who refused to capitulate to a Texas undemocratic party. Here are many events that we can talk about. But folks, the number is 713-526-5738, 713-526-KPFT, and Roxy says it this way. 713-JAM-KPFT. And our first caller is Terry, my friend. Talk to me. Hola, how Com you doing, my friend? Como estas, my friend? And talk to me. Well, you know, I'm I'm excited like everyone else about the upcoming race. Mm -hmm. uh, a number a number of points, though, I think, uh, are going to point the way and, and magnify a potential Democratic shift in victory. Number one, the continual harshness of the immigration policy of the far lunatic right. Number two, the recessive demographic trend among Republicans. Number three, the overwhelmingly positive demographic trend of those who are most likely to identify with and vote Democratic. I think those are structural issues that they won't be able to overcome, and I'm optimistic that Texas will turn this election cycle, but if not this one for sure, 2020 will be a, a water, watershed year. I agree with you wholeheartedly. Now, there are a lot of, there. you know, earlier today, um, one of my friends in my club sent me a message and he it was a message from msnbc's um there was a writer at msnbc and i think i had it here and what was interesting is is the way the the story came across and in effect what they said and before before i continue this i i don't have a lot of calls so i want to make sure that folks know this is a call-in uh, show and it's not asking for money this time we actually want to hear your we will actually want to hear your questions or your comments we want to put you on air and remember whatever and, and, and look here, we want to get uh, uh, to the community as well. So come on, 713-526-5738. But um, Terry, the, the story was titled in, in uh, Wendy Davis is in it to win it, but does she still have a shot? That, that was written by, I don't recall it, the author at, MS, at, at actually the MSNBC website. But in effect, the story questioned a couple of people here at the university the rice university who came out and said wendy davis doesn't have a chance 
But wait a minute. There may be still a slight chance for her to win if Greg Abbott makes a mistake. But Greg Abbott won't make a mistake. Yes, and I believe those were the same people who predicted both the President McCain and the President Romney. Exactly. Exactly. We have to remember those things. But uh, it, it is a bit more, it is a bit worse in, in, in what I think they're doing here. Because um, there are two ways to reduce voter turnout. You can reduce voter turnout by creating a, uh, what's the word that I want to use? By having these voter ID laws that makes it very restrictive for people to vote, which is one of the things that we're doing here in Texas. We're trying to restrict voting. And the other option that we have is to depress the vote. And how do you depress the vote but to work with people's psychology? If somebody believes in their heart that this can't, their candidate, the candidate they want to support is not going to win, and at the same time they have something to do, uh, you think they're going to really make that effort to go out there and vote as opposed to doing that something else when they think their vote is not going to count? Oh, uh, absolutely agree. This is what you're seeing is an evolution of the Lee Atwater strategy. First, exactly. Under Reagan, where if you repeat a lie or a number of lies often enough, it doesn't matter whether they're a lie or not. The fact is that people will start to believe them. Right. So you continually tell people that Wendy Davis doesn't have a chance unless Greg Allen makes a mistake and he won't make a mistake and he's going to be the eventual governor, then not only do you suppress the vote by progressive and draconian election laws, but you, you, you depress the vote, as you said, psychologically, because people don't want to support what they perceive to be a loser. Exactly. Exactly. And, and that, that, that is what's so sad about it. Um, it. It is funny because the way it, it's amazing the way the, um, the person expresses it here. He actually says, um, at this point, wait, what, what, let me see, I want to tell you exactly what he said. The campaign is just beginning in earnest. As this race draws closest in contrast, uh, contrast will be made and voters will learn about the choices that they have between these two candidates as if, as if they're the ones who are going to determine what those choices are going to be, as if they will determine that. That is what we have to get across from or get away from. But like I, I, I mentioned in the blog, and this part is rather important, and, and I wish some of the folks who are supporting anybody other than Wendy Davis would call in and talk about this, and actually those who support Wendy Davis as well. But um, they're, they're, this election actually is going to matter because at this point in time, there are one million Texans, one million Texans that are suffering from the inability to get health care. And Greg Abbott has all but codified that he is not going to support any expansion of Medicaid. And a million women, children, poor adults are going to be left holding the bags. But it's, it goes a bit deeper than that. Hospitals that would likely open because of the new influx of potential people that now have health care won't be built here. So what does that actually mean as well? That actually means it hits potential employment of the state. There is a study that came out that showed that around the country, increases in, in coverage, people getting coverage for health care, is over 18% increase in coverage in states that decided to implement the uh, the Medicaid expansion to the Affordable Care Act. You know what it is in states like Texas? Under 4%. And those are the 4%, yes, yeah, under 4%. Roxy. I just can't believe, I mean, like, I just can't believe one of the biggest states in America is not, is... Four percent. Is it because it's mostly a red state? Well, here's what happens, okay? Um, the, the problem here is that our governor and everybody else, have when, when the president got elected, they, they came out and they said they had a meeting in Washington, D.C. And a meeting in Washington, D.C. said specifically, nothing that the president does, Obama does, will the Republican Party support. 
And they made that, I don't want to call it a law, a rule, they made that pact. Now, let me tell you what's interesting about this whole thing, because we, we always seem to, for now, get back into the Medicaid, uh, into um, the Affordable Care Act, Obamacare. The Affordable Care Act was written originally by the Heritage Foundation. The Heritage Foundation is a conservative think tank that gives all their ideas for the Republican Party to implement. The president made a calculated risk or deal. What he did is he said, you know what? I am going to work from their, from their point of view because Democratic president is going to pass a bill that Republicans have already said they're willing to support. And this bill will help many people. Well, suddenly, guess what? Suddenly, that thing that was going to provide health care to millions of Americans using the market, the free market. In other words, it wasn't going to be the government paying for the, for the service or anything. It was going to be private insurance companies. Everything Republicans love. All free market. That's what they got. But what did they turn around and lie and say from the very start? It was a government takeover of health care from Mitch McConnell to John Boehner to Michelle Lunatic Bachman <laughs> on down the line. Each yes. and every one of them sat yes. there and lied through their teeth and said it was a government takeover, and it is not a government takeover. And the funny thing about it, Terry, is, as I mentioned, I'm, let me give a station ID. Folks, this is KPFT 90.1 Houston, and I don't have my thing here, so Roxy, help me out. It is 90.1 in Houston. It is 90, 89.5 in Galveston. And in Goodrich, Livingston, it is 90.3. There you go. And please, folks, it's a call-in show. We need Terry needs some help on the line. So give me a call, 713-526-5738. A lot of you are, during our, you know what's interesting? Um, during the fun drive, we had a lot of people calling in here wanting to talk. But because the phones were all going to the fun drive, they had to they had to talk to the people who were begging for money for the show. Yes. Now that they have the opportunity to talk, we're not in fun drive anymore. We're not in fun drive, so why aren't uh -huh. you calling? Last time we had what about fifteen twenty calls. The last time we had open calls, where are you guys today? <laughs> we we have a subject we want to start talking about: the control of leadership in Texas. Wendy Davis. Greg Abbott. I know, folks, you guys have something to say about that. But isn't it true that, like, uh, well, I mean, doesn't the Democratic Party have to get, like, 51 point something percent of the well, vote? Well, not... And, and Republicans, they need, like, 49 yes. point something? Yes. Let me tell you what, what they did for that. And it's, it's actually worse than that. Uh, oh, oh, wow. I was being yeah, generous. You were being generous. I mean, we have to have a six point advantage to win and the, the, what what happened let me tell you how that works what happens in texas and other states and th this is not a democratic or republican thing every governor that is in power or state legislature that's in power for that particular state they're going to try to gerrymander gerrymander means draw the lines for the district in such a manner that they can maximize how many candidates they can get so here's what they do in texas uh, places like houston uh, Dallas, San Antonio, Austin, uh, Corpus Christi, these are very democratic. Have a, they have a very gr high grouping of Democrats. So what they do is they draw districts that puts a lot of those people together. So if you draw, if you take a pie chart and you put a whole bunch of, uh, if you put 90% Democrats in one district, then in other districts you put 55% Republicans and 45% Democrats, you can actually r r win more candidates than population because you only need 50 point you only need 50 plus one to be the sent to the to be the congressperson for that district. But in the Democratic district, you're going to win almost a hundred percent of the vote, while in the Republican district, you may win 50 point. 50 something oh. percent so as it turns out when you add the numbers up let me give some examples a state like north carolina north carolina have more democrats really than republicans but they send about nine and my numbers may be somewhat off so anybody can call and correct me but they send nine republicans five democrats 
Okay? Michigan, another blue state, they send a whole bunch of Republicans, probably let's say 15 or so, and maybe six Democrats. So what you find in the last election, in the, in the 2012 election, is it 20? yeah, the 2012 election, even though the House is controlled by Republicans, by a large number actually, uh, plus, I don't know, plus 30 or something like that, Actually, I think it's like plus 34 because we need to win 17 to take the take it back. Uh, if you take a look at what happens there, it turns out that more people voted for Democrats for the House. But the House is very strongly Republican. And that we have that's been happening throughout the country. There are more registered Democrats and there are registered Republicans. There are more, you know, in all these things. But because... Democrats tend not to vote in the off elections when governors are chosen. That's they rare. take control of the, you know, of, of how these districts are drawn out. And that really hurts. That really hurts because what it means is it doesn't it doesn't give you a real true uh picture of what democracy is, right? Mm -hmm. It doesn't give you a true picture of what democracy is. Right, Terry? Right, but the other side isn't interested in democracy. <laughs> you know that's true <laughs> you know i mean um here's the thing if you're supporting the top one percent right if 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 your policies are there to support the top one percent then you cannot be really into true democracy because true democracy means that you are going to have policies that are not as extractive as those policies these people want classic example right um, why is it that to send uh, Ashley and Roxy to college, these parents had to put out so much money when at the same time, when we were in college, Terry, you remember those days, $4 okay. an hour for, and I, I, I kind of spoke a, a bit about that last week, last week, but it all, it all uh, forms one circle. Why is it that the kids today are paying a lot more for college? It has nothing to do with inflation. It has zilch to do with inflation. So when people say, oh, well, the cost of living went up, yeah, but it's that, not that much compared to what these kids have to pay. You and I benefited from our parents having paid all those taxes in those days, Terry. I mean, when our, pa our parents paid taxes, uh, those taxes went into the coffers, and they also went to support very good public, s public schools. Very good public schools. Well, what? Republicans have been playing a shell game in this state since uh, Bush got elected in '96. Right. Well, since Cle I would say Clements. Uh, Clement. Mm, you remember yeah, Clements in yeah, the old days? Yeah, I remember. Yeah, I remember Bill Clements. Yeah. Well, yeah, I, I agree. But it really kicked into overdrive under Bush, and and what they did was they were very popular in advertising that they didn't raise anybody's taxes, which was true, and in fact they cut taxes, which was yes. also true. But what they didn't say was they raised every single fee. Now, I'm going to date myself. My very first <laughs> license, when I paid for it, my, my renewal fee was $2. Wow. Which license? Driver's license? Driver's license. Wow. You, that's even before that time. I never paid that when I came to the States. Yeah. It was two. Well, I got you by, you know, four years. <laughs> Only a few years. Only a few. But it was, very it few. was $2. Right. And, and so now it's $60. You know, you used to get your license plate. And now they changed that to a, that was like 10 bucks. Now right. it's 30, 40, 50 bucks, whatever it is. They raised every single fee upon which you had to get from the state, whether you had a professional license, right. whether you were applying for an incorporation. They doubled, tripled, quadrupled, quintupled every single fee. And as a result, that's the break in property tax. And you know what is so funny about all of that, Terry? That's still a tax increase. They don't call it that, but it's what you call a regressive tax increase because it means no longer based on income. It just means that all the lower classes, upper classes, or whatever, pay the same rate. So it's a backdoor into paying a regular tax. But, Terry, I got a, another uh, caller, Bill from Humble. Bill from Humble, you're hot, my friend. Talk to me. Hey, Berlo, how you doing? All right, how you doing, Bill? I'm good. I'm good. Um... I tell you, I was going to, I was listening to you last week when you were talking about the student loans and the bankruptcy thing. Yes, sir. And, um, you know, you had an anecdotal story uh, where you took um, the bank involved to task, and I don't blame you for that. Mm -hmm. But um, 
you know, what the bank was doing was perfectly legal. Yes. And the bankruptcy law that they're functioning under um, started off when Clinton was president. It was finally passed under George Bush mm -hmm. with over 300 votes in the House. In other words, a lot of Democrats voted for it. I am with you, my brother. And um, you never mentioned that last week. And I wish that you would, you know, take the Democrats to task when they do Republican things, which is what that bill was. That was a bill heavily lobbied for by the banks, the insurance companies, and the banks, and more from the banks. And, um, you know, there was nothing in there for the 99 percent. Bill, uh, Bill, you justifiably called me out. You're right. You justifiably called me out. I should have said that it... You, you know, when, when, I, when I said that, right, um, mm -hmm. it was pretty much stating the fact that there were a whole lot of lobbyists. But I think, you're, I think you're right that I didn't point out that they were both bought. And I think that's essential because whenever people ask me about who I am or what I represent, I always say I am, I am the left side. I'm, the, I'm usually considered the Democratic side of the Democratic Party because, as we know, <laughs> And as we know, and I don't know whether you're, are you a Democrat, Republican, trans, Oh, no, whatever. no, I am. Uh, you, you know what the political compass is? Yes. Uh, I am down, you know, somewhere down between Gandhi and the Dalai Lama. <laughs> hey, if you're, the, you're my kind of guy, man, okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, I... Uh, now, you know, you're talking about the state election here with the governor. Yes. And um, I actually, you know, have been very active with Battlegrounds. And uh, you've actually heard me speak on that subject. Oh, Bill, I know who you are now. I, there I, you I, go. Oh, okay, okay. And, um, you know, certainly uh, I absolutely believe that, you know, Wendy Davis would be a huge improvement over Greg Abbott. Right. Even though she's, you know, unlikely to be able to accomplish very much in what will then be a gridlock state but, government. But you know what? I, uh, what? Right now, gridlock in Texas is it's an improvement. Because what we've lost and what we would continue to lose if these people stay in power as they are, as you know, for what they're doing right now, it would Absolutely. be detrimental. I, look, let me tell you, Bill. I, you, let me tell you what I really fear, okay? Uh-huh. Uh, Texans and uh, Americans, and specifically Texans, don't really understand what's at stake. And what here's what I mean: what's at stake. Uh, you remember when your mother, and and, and I'm not trying to be sexist or anything, uh, ladies no, that no, are no. Listen, listening. But I, I'm not talking to you, Bill. I'm talking to the women that are listening, buddy. Come on, I just oh, <laughs> not you, Bill. I know who you are, but what I'm saying is. But you remember the time when uh, the dad could work and the mother stayed home and everything was okay. The bills could still get paid. Then, well, okay, yes. I mean, in the 60s when I grew up, exactly. most families um, could exist on a, you know, a middle-class lifestyle on, a, on one salary. Right, and That's I should— That's absolutely true. And ordinary— from ordinary jobs, jobs like being, say, a mail carrier. Absolutely. So, and, and I, I was saying, oh, the dad would stay, go to work and the mother stay home. In today's uh, world where we are now really moving for real equ equitable socialization, if you will, um, it, the, maybe the woman works and the guy stays home and take care of the kids. Okay? That mm -hmm. was possible. No longer possible for the vast majority of Americans. Now, both, had to, no, both have to go to work. What does that create? In some instances, because you have a lot more latchkey kids, we have kids with issues. Now that we have kids with issues and a society that it's trying to cut and cut all social services, we're, we're making these parents work harder and the latchkey kids that are left behind, there are no social services to take care of them or to ensure that they don't get into certain issues. And, you know, another call is coming in, but I mean, um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we have it where these people, you know, where there's no social services for these kids. Now it's even worse 
Because now you have the mother and the father working. We have some of the kids now when they reach a certain age, they also have to work to contribute. And in the process of them, them contributing as well, they have that much less to do with school. And it goes on and on and on again. So, you know, well, this is my fear. Hold on, Bill. Let me, let, me, let me just say this one piece and then I'll let you in again. Yeah. My biggest fear is this. Eventually, people are going to realize that they've been had. And just like in my part of the world, Central America, eventually when people uh, believe they've been had, they start to react. And when they start to react, that's where we start getting small violences. Then it increases and it goes a bit further. And that's my fear, that these guys are going to push Americans and specifically Texans to the limit. And when the explosions start, if it starts to metastasize, we have a problem. Go, Bill. Well, um, I was just going to say, you brought up uh, the schools. Um, you, you, you realize that the keystone of um, Senator Davis's um, yes. Campaign. policy yes. position is an education program. Absolutely. Which is all well and good. I'm not sure it's the right sort of tactic. I'm not, you know, I still think um, jobs and unemployment is going to be where the Republicans um, are going to have an edge. Not because they should, but just because people believe that they should. Right, I hear you. Um, but um, on the education thing, Republicans very much, especially in this state, you know, are for voucherization and privatization of the public schools. They would love to do away with right. the public schools. And that is something, even out here where you live and where I live, um, you know, uh, people love their public schools. Absolutely. And if they suddenly find themselves having a, you know, pitch in out of their pocket in addition to the taxes that they pay, um, you know, you're going to have a lot of people whose heads are going to explode. Look, you're right. Look, I got to go to another call, Bill, but you're so right. So right. But stay. Bruce, you're next. Thanks for taking my call. Hey, Bruce, how you doing? Okay. Uh, hey, I just wanted to say I went to that uh, White Linen Knights event uh -huh. in the Heights a yes. couple weeks ago, uh -huh. and the local Democrats had their ground game on. I tell you, that's uh, what that's what don't show up in the polls. And uh, uh, like um, they had uh, someone out there trying to get people to go into uh, Sheila Jackson Lee's office, right? And we started in, but it was full of people. There wasn't any room, so we had to go out. And then uh, 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 some of Wendy Davis's people got a hold of us and gave us stickers, put on our shirts. Right. And somebody, I, I, I forget who, somebody got my uh, name and phone number, and an organizer's called me already mm -hmm. and talked me into doing some uh, canvassing. Right. So they are organized. Yeah, and, um, that is what and, it's going to take. That's the only way she wins. And, uh, you know, there was no Republican presence there at all. Yeah, that, that is so right. Well, look, I appreciate your call, Bruce. Keep on okay. calling. Keep on listening. And, um, you know, I'm glad that you gave me that report. And, uh, you know, remember, go to the website, uh, politicsdoneright.com or facebook.com slash politicsdoneright. And let's continue the communication there, okay, my friend? Okay. Excellent. John okay. from Houston. Good evening. Good evening, John. How are you doing? I'm all right. How are you doing, sir? Oh, great, sir. Talk to me. Uh, my uh, my concern with the politics in the U.S. now is we've come to a point where we're it's no longer about politics. It's almost as if it's um, uh, well, what can I say? Like uh, belief. Mm -hmm. Like I don't believe this guys be deserve to be American, so I'll do anything I can to vote as a Republican, because I oppose anything to do with these guys, because exactly. I don't like them. I don't want nothing to do with them. Exactly. So the real question in our politics today is not based on anything, rather than, like somebody said the other day, uh, they do believe that there's a, there's a war on white people. In the United States. I, I blogged about that. I actually have the clip that I blogged. It was, you know, let me, let me tell you, it, it's amazing that people say that, you know, but it was great to see that uh, Ezra Klein went on MSNBC and Ezra Klein said uh, his final statement was prescient. Ezra Klein said, my God, if there is a war on white people, I am so 
concerned what it looks like for a war on everybody else. But the, the right. way he said it, he, he actually showed that of every particular group, that group have moved ahead. And But what I wrote, I wrote a blog about this, and I'm coming to you next, Wayne. I wrote an important blog about that statement because it wasn't re- the, the statement isn't really about white people. The statement is about class, but it, it is framed in, in, the, in, in white people to draw the carnal instinct that that draws out in some. You know, that the sickness of, of that is drawn out. But let me tell you what I reminded folks. If I had one white person that is worth one billion dollars and i had 999 white persons that that each of them are worth one thousand dollars that would be equivalent to saying there are one the average white person is a millionaire what it doesn't tell you is that there are 90 999 poor white people and one very wealthy white person And that is what I, you know, when I'm doing my blogging and talking to communities and so forth, that's what I try to get across. Don't let them draw you into that crap about racial differences and all of that. We're all in this ball game, brother. We're all in the game. And what they do is they try to separate gay from straight, white from Mexican, from black, from all these things. And they, they, they create those issues. And that those issues are nothing but distractions. For the right. plutocracy there, there was to a continue. Very, um, funny article, um, I think somewhere out there in um, in, in the I think Washington Times, right. saying something about the Israelis is starting to be wary of the United States as an influence because they're starting to realize that things are not what they used to be in the right. United States. So they are old friends who would look the other way while we see children being slaughtered. Right. Mothers being slaughtered, right. people being blown to bits, and the whole time, the only thing we see on CNN and Fox News is Israel has the right to defend itself. Exactly, exactly. But I gotta ask somebody this: If I'm in your house, right, I beat up your kid, I rape your wife, mm-hmm. I, dis- I, 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 I tell you what can come into your house and what cannot come into your house, right. At what point do I expect you to react to me? You know, that is a that, that state, is a question that, that most is, people don't understand. That is, that is a tough statement that you've just made there, but it's a statement that I think folks should understand, and that is something that we talk about all the time. Uh, how does oppression work, and what's the reaction to oppression? Okay, right, and, and, now, and now also before I just go, yes. I don't want to hear about Hillary Clinton running for presidency. We've had almost 20, how many years is this now? From Bill Clinton to the Bush family, back to Obama, and then back to Hillary Clinton. That is a disaster for the Democratic Party. Let me and tell they need to wake up and realize, unless mm-hmm. they have a different solution to American problems, unless they have a different solution, again, I repeat, if Democrats think this is going to be just another, another campaign so that I'm not with the Republican because I'm voting for Democratic Party, then I think it's time for us to look for different third parties. And you know something? Because this country has come to that point. John, let me tell you something, John. That is something that we uh, folks, or some of us uh, in other organizations like Move to Amend, and for those people who don't know that group, move to amend.org or coffeepartyusa.org. These are groups that are attempting to go beyond just titles of parties but to drag parties into doing what is right okay right. these are and groups that are attempting to pull the parties into doing things that are right what you said there is very important with regards to the the the, the, the suppression that that's been going on in palestine look i don't take a palestinian israeli position okay what i mean by that is i am not anti-semitic i am not anti-palestinian I am for people. I'm for humanity. What has That's happened right. to what has happened to Palestinians is a travesty. Uh, it's three a weeks, travesty. I three agree weeks with you. ago, three weeks ago, I had Rula Jevril on. She got cut from MSNBC when she dared say what you just said. She didn't say it as, as tough well, as you said it. I, I but do she wonder said, where's the black leaders? Where are the black leaders in this country? Listen. We're seeing what's happening. I was not in the country when they were being bombed, but I was working somewhere in Korea. Right. And the CNN picture different from here. I understand. I flew back in the United States. You don't see the reality. Over there, I'm watching kids as young as 
what, six months being in a gurney with no head? Yes. What's I, going I on here? You know, I, I explained that in several blogs that I have, including se sending them to a few pictures in Al Jazeera, because in Al Jazeera, at least you get a few better pictures. But Rula Jibril on her Twitter, which is uh, Rula Jibril, on, on, on uh, the, her Twitter, she has a lot of those pictures that shows the reality of what's it's, going on in Palestine. You know, it's not in our long-term interest to keep, to, to keep this up. I mean, if you have a friend who's robbing and killing people, at some point you've got to realize, dude, th this is not in my best interest. Exactly. You and need to shape up. That's what Rula but, said. That in fact, uh, Rula came on the show and that she said that. She said, I am not doing this for me. I'm saying... If America continues to support these actions, and it has nothing to do with support specifically of Israel or support of Gaza or any of these places, it has everything to do with just do what's right. That's and it. That's what I don't understand. Most Americans are ignorant. They don't understand. Your airspace has been occupied. They occupy Galveston. You can't okay, escape. Okay, John, let me just they say one thing. From six well, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make a correct. I want to make a, make a, a statement here. Americans are not ignorant. Let me tell you what's the problem with them. Let me, let me qualify that. Americans have been trained. Americans have been trained on how to listen to news, on what kind of news to listen. A lot of my friends would say the same. I'm trying to temper what I say because I am not going to get followers saying Americans are ignorant. I am not going to get people wanting to think if I come to them with that approach. So my approach now and I think it should be your approach and all our approaches, should be the way to, to, to help folks see a point of view. And we don't need to be like the other side in the way we, we get things done. But I, I'm with you. I get your point, And I know exactly what you're talking about. You know, I understand where you're coming from. But that is why there's a KPFT.org where you can go give a tip whenever you want to help this station to stay on air that real information can get out there. And this, this is a plug after or, or a thing, but one of the things that I like to tell folks all of the times is this. You cannot get real news, as you just mentioned, on MSNBC, CBS, ABC, CNN, on all these. Those guys would love to give you good news, but they're not permitted to do it. The plutocracy does not allow it. We still right. have community radio that allows us to put real news on and you guys have to support it if you, we were to continue it was a pleasure speaking to you john and the Thank next you. person is wayne wayne how you doing my friend hey egberto hey, Egber. so that's me yes that's you how you doing this evening all right how you doing my friend i'm good man talk hey, to you're me having a great show here and, and I, I, I'm going to try to stay away from israel tonight <laughs> because I, I really have no 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 uh idea i have an idea but but i'm not gonna leave that alone. that's that's good but my I, friend but but i want to go back to the affordable care and and, and here in texas yes sir and i'm gonna stay there <clears throat> uh uh we we as as people here in texas need to realize something that the affordable care was created for people in texas that have no insurance and and, and it should be utilized by all right no matter what color you is, no matter what your skin color is, it should be utilized by all. And anyway, they should be signing up in droves. Here's why. Here's why. Because when 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 it's all said and done, and 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 the affordable care is is really put to the test here in Texas, it will be better for the America for the Texas people to have afford have the affordable care. Now, uh, <clears throat> when uh, your governor which is Rick here at this point, and, 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 and this, this uh, avid guy, I hate to use those people's names, have done so much to, to hurt the Texas people, and, and, and that's true. They have. By denying them the, uh, the Medicaid expansion here in Texas. Now, <clears throat> I, had a, I had a nephew, and my nephew had just got out of prison. I want to say this here. And I brought him up here to my house, and I told him, I said, you go sign up for the Affordable Care Act. And he signed up for it. He didn't have a job. Two weeks later, he had a job. You know why he had a job? Why? Because because they wanted that money. Right. You understand what right. I'm saying? Right. I, okay. I see exactly. You know, that is a, that is so interesting, and, and a lot of people don't, probably don't follow exactly what you're saying. The reality is your son, uh, without a job, would have had to uh, sign up for Medicaid, okay? Now, yes. getting a job, he didn't sign up for Medicaid. What he got was Obamacare primary, 
In other words, yeah. he got the Affordable Care Act where he was actually paying for it, but he was paying for it at an affordable rate. And if, yes, his job loves that, of course, because the job got to hire somebody doing some work at a subsidized level based on what he makes. Yeah, but, but, but black people, I don't think, understand that. Here's another thing that I, I, I want to say. I think Wendy Davis needs to get out, and I love Wendy Davis. Don't get me wrong. I'm going to vote for her. But to, to be here in Texas, in Houston especially, and see no signs of Wendy Davis out here and no, no, you know, no, no pictures of her mm -hmm. and, and who she is, they're going to have to do something about let me, it. Let me, let me just say something, Wayne, and this is, what I'm going to tell you is important, okay? It's good to have signs. It's good to have yard signs and all that sort of thing, okay? Mm -hmm. But all the science shows that the yard signs and all of that does very little for you to win an election. What, does it, what, what gets you to win an election is for you to come out and touch people, for you to have your people make a telephone call, for you to have your people make people believe that their vote matters. And I'm going to tell you if, you, if you listen to John, not John, but Bill, Bill called in earlier and spoke about Battleground Texas and how we went into a meeting and there were a lot of people there. I can tell you from Wendy Davis was at my wife's church. My wife goes to a predominantly black church and uh, she was in there. Uh, Wendy Davis took the crowd. She came in there and she got that crowd going. So she is making her stops one place at a time. She's going to all these population centers. She's talking to everybody. She's going to be one of the, or I'm noticing that she's one of the most inclusive candidates running. Have you seen Greg Abbott in Houston? She has yeah. almost parked herself in Houston, Bear County, Travis County, uh, Dallas County, and Tarrant County. These are the population centers in this state. And if you win those counties big, and she is actually working towards that. And if Battleground Texas does its work in the fringes in the rural counties, where it's amazing because the values of the rural counties, the rural counties in America are some of the poorest areas or some of the areas with the, 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 the most uh, um, teen pregnancies and all these issues that afflict the rural areas. And somehow they have not voted their interest. But Battleground Texas and other, and other groups are going down there and doing that job. So the idea is this. The poll numbers for her were terrible a few weeks ago. Uh, the Rasmussen poll, which is a conservative poll, came out uh, uh, this weekend. And it showed that she had a five-point improvement or something like that. And I, e even though I don't want to go into poll skewing like Republicans did back in the days of uh, President Obama... What is important to note is that whenever you see there is a likely poll, let's say somebody says uh, this is a poll of likely voters. What they're telling you is you have to ask, how do you define a likely voter? They define a likely voter as somebody who has voted in two elections consecutively. They consider a like so the definition of a likely voter is very, very important. And if it is true, and notice I'm saying, if it is true, what, the reason I'm saying this election cannot be called is if it is true that Battleground Texas is registering the amount of people that they are registering, if it is true that their intent of staying in touch with these people after they register them is true, if it is true that this woman is marching around the state like she has here in Houston, then what is true is that the polls probably does not indicate the level that we have the, the, the level of her strength as yet now she still has a, a an issue with people knowing who they are but you know what i want to ask terry to come in on, on the statement i just made and hear his opinion on that but, and i'm but, sorry yeah go ahead wayne what you want let, let me do this before you ask terry and yeah. i'm gonna say this yes uh a face a face, and remember this, Egberto. Yes, sir. A face with a name uh -huh. is recognition. Yes. Okay? We put those people, and I want to say this good, black yes. people. Yes, sir. Put those two together. Right. You understand what I'm saying? And it, and it clicks in their mind. Yes. Now, now, now we as, as, as a people may not listen uh, uh, to a whole lot of... Uh, 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 radio talk and things like that, especially right. on politics. Okay, right. But but a but a face and a name 
it's something that sticks in our well, mind. You know what, we have, I, to, we I, have to realize that. And, and that's, that's, that's the black people. Now, the problem is getting them out to vote. <laughs> Okay. Yes, sir. I tell you what, Wayne. Uh, okay. Let me, wait, 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 wait. Let, let Terry talk. But Wayne, before before Terry talk, I want to tell you this: the same passion that you have in talking in this, I mm -hmm. hope you are going to go out there in your community with that passion and work the folks. Okay, my brother. Okay. Take care. You have a great one. Call in and keep calling and keep listening, my friend. Okay. Take care Bye. now, Terry. Terry. I guess Terry is on his mute or something like that. Anyhow. But yes, folks, uh, as you can see, this is going to be a real substantive election. I have, a, what, two more minutes ago? This is going to be a real substantive. Hey, John, come on in. John, are you there? Hey, Bertha, how you doing? Oh, I, I misunderstood what she was actually saying about you. I thought you could only listen. Talk to me, John. We only have about two more minutes. Okay. Uh, well, you know, it's... Uh I mean, I enjoy what you what you're saying. I, I was, actually haven't been able to listen to the whole show because there was a problem with this, uh, you know, the the internet connection. Yes, I heard. So, yeah. So, anyways, I, I haven't really heard everything that was going on, but uh, yeah, I mean, I, I just want to encourage people to get out. I mean, I think I I do, you know, disagree with you a little bit on the actual uh, semantics of the polling. But, uh, Tell you know, me that really quickly. I want to hear the it. disagreement. I, I'm going to have to go quickly, but I really want to hear where you disagree so I can make some modifications if necessary. Okay. Well, I mean, the the likely. I mean, you're correct about the likely uh, screening, like in in the 2010 election. Mm -hmm. uh, it actually helped Bennett and Reed because they under uh, on they the under, uh, estimated uh, Hispanic voters. They right. turned out and they actually helped them win. So so you make a good point. But uh, one one point, uh, you know, the success rate of likely voters is just kind of overwhelming, and that's why it's always done so often. But I mean, like I said, you, you do make a good point. If people turn out, I mean, they will modify those those uh, rates. Hey, and so John, I'm on so a, That's we, important. We're going to have to talk about that on Saturday uh, because I'm 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 on a tight rope right now. So. We're going to have to shut this baby down right now. So here is the deal, folks. Remember, to, Terry, come on in real quickly. Terry, just give a quick 10 seconds. There are 1,000 voters who are Hispanic every day who turn 18. Continuing the harsh policies that the Republicans have done so well enunciating will assure their demise. Thank you, sir. Uh, talk to you later, Terry. Folks, remember, this is Politics Done Right. What we need to for you to go is go to politicsdoneright.com. Go to facebook.com slash politicsdoneright. Reach me at Egberto Willies on, on, on Twitter. Thank you for listening. You guys have a wonderful night. Thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right. I am your host, Egberto Willies. You can personally reach me by sending an email to egberto at politicsdoneright.com. Remember, Egberto is spelled E-G-B-E-R-T-O. Change starts with you. 90.1 KPFT gives you information not tainted by corporate interest. Please visit kpft.org and contribute. Let's ensure continued access to real information and news remain available to all. Again, thank you very much for listening to Politics Done Right.